Hello boys and girls, I'm Pearl of Wisdom and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we have been doing trade videos because I like it, it's fun. And we're going to do another one today on John Klingberg. Got a couple articles out by some pretty prominent people saying that John Klingberg is out there for the land to take, uh, possibly. So we're going to look at some of those articles, see kind of what teams may be interested in him. We got five teams that he may go to and what the return could be for somebody like John Klingberg. I have been doing a couple of these now. We did Hurdle, we did to Foley. Um, we've done like four or five of them. Hurdle and Foley were the last ones we did. Go check them out. They're pretty fun. I send them out to people. We have great conversation about it. I enjoy it. If you enjoy this kind of programming, I do a live show from 3.30 to 5.30 Eastern weekdays called the, coincidentally, called the NHL Perlo Wisdom Show. You can go there and talk. It's interactive. We have guests on. It's a lot of frolic. You'll enjoy it. Steel Flyers All Sports Network as well. If you like, uh, all, if you like the four major sports and things within those four major sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Okay, let's look at this John Klingberg situation, shall we? Try that way. There we go. <laughs> okay, so according to Jeff Merrick, who is like getting big on the insider thing here with Sportsnet, the Dallas Stars have made a decision on the future defenseman John Klingberg, and the decision is to trade the talented offensive defenseman. Merrick notes that the Stars have stepped up their efforts to trade John Klingberg. We believe very much he's getting dealt. This is Sportsnet saying this, that it's hard to say exactly when, but the Dallas Stars seem aggressive at trying to get something done. There's no mention of where he might go here or anything like that. It was a very short uh, caption. However, we have another piece here that I want to look at that happened a little more recently where uh, it talks about how before they added Ryan Suter, Klingberg has been the center of trade rumors. He's got a contract coming up right away. And we're going to look at that in a second. We're going to look at his contract status and all of those sort of things. Uh, and he's probably going to demand quite a bit of money based on his point production over his career. And it's possible that Dallas just simply can't afford to pay him. Now, this is later after Sportsnet says that they're going to trade him. They start saying things like, when I talk about the core of our team, John is one of those members. He's been a Dallas star from day one. He's a big part of our franchise, and he's a top-level defenseman. Uh, until the, recently, these trade rumors were just rumors. However, it's reported over the weekend that Carolina Hurricanes did, in fact, reach out about the availability of Klingberg. Again, this is Sportsnet that's coming up with this. And again, Jeff Merrick. Uh, with the Hurricanes losing a few defensemen, they call basically sounds like it would more than likely be a rental type thing there with Carolina. But we're going to look at Carolina and the possibility of him being the guy that they choose. But as you can tell, the owner, uh, Jim Neal, has is not going to just give him up for cheap. He put He places a value on him. And Dal the Dallas Stars are in a playoff hunt right now, playoff race. So in order, if they're going to make this trade, and I think this trade is more than just the Dallas Stars, it has might have something to do with John Klingberg himself. Um, I heard, and this is really a rumor because I haven't heard it in too many places, that John Klingberg himself is the one that's asking for the trade. So... But I'm going to go with that as a pure rumor because I haven't been able to go with that anywhere else. I just can't see why Dallas would even be entertaining this type of conversation unless John Klingberg himself is kind of pushing the envelope a little bit. Um, what it was was there was one article where it talked about Klingberg saying that he didn't feel respected by Dallas and all of those sort of things like that. That being said, it's out there. It's gone to Sportsnet. They seem pretty positive. He's going to get traded. 
And if that's the case, I have some scenarios that might make sense for the Dallas Stars. Um, if they were to fall out of the playoff race, and I kind of feel that unlikely, I think they're going to be in the race right to the end, then um, I would assume that they would want another player back. And that's how I'm looking at it from this perspective. If they are out of it, then yeah, they probably take prospects. Why lose the guy for nothing if they're not going to be able to afford it? So we'll look at all those possibilities. But this is John Klingberg here, and he is making $4.25 million right now, which is really not bad money for his production um, that he has been putting up on a regular basis. This year, his numbers have been okay in the 40 point range that's kind of where he's he's kind of like a 50 point guy for the most part when he played a full season in 2018 he had 67 points uh he was about and in 64 games he had 45 which is right around that 50 to 60 point ratio for a defenseman and he's not horrible defensively uh he's not a complete liability like some other defensemen out there so his value would probably be, be fairly high to people, especially to teams that are looking for offense from their defense. Um, uh, it's hard to find a guy like John Klingberg. So let's look at a couple teams that, for the most part, I think any team that would be making this trade right now would be doing so with the idea of winning now. Um, even more so if they can sign him later as well. I don't think that as much as Dallas is probably trying to build leverage right now and say that we're going to keep them, if, if John Klingberg himself has felt disrespected and, and really has decided, look, I just don't want to come back. I'm not coming back here no matter what. Even if they are in a playoff race, they probably are going to let him go. And they'll find a player, and I think that's quite likely the case here. So I'm going to go through teams that have a defenseman to give up, um, would probably need to give up something anyways because of cap space, and would be able to add a pick to be able to give them, to give Dallas something in return. So we're starting with the Washington Capitals. Um, the Washington Capitals are really just going to be going for it every year right now. The Ovechkin's not getting any younger Kuznetsov's not getting any younger. He's 29. It's unbelievable that Kuznetsov is only 29 years old. I, I really thought he's been in the league so long, it feels like he's actually older than that. But Backstrom's 34. Um, it's This team is getting long in the tooth in a lot of areas. But I don't really think it's as old as people make it out to be. Uh, Alex Ovechkin is a, uh, is a young 36. Backstrom maybe a little bit and then Lars Eller is 32 years old but it's not as old as, as people make it out to being and adding a 29 year old to this defense which on paper is not the greatest really fortunately for them Martin Favari or Favari has really stepped up this year but Justin Schultz who is a free agent also has not really been putting up the numbers that they want for a guy who plays the type of game that he has. And I doubt very much they're going to be entertaining the idea of bringing him back. So my thought is that Dallas is going to need another one defenseman back in return. Justin Schultz is a decent defenseman that they could use in that spot. He's a right defenseman. He can fill that right-hand spot that uh is going to be lost if they trade him so i'm thinking justin schultz and a pick something of that nature probably a second pick second round pick something like that hopefully that's all it's going to take uh if they get a lot of people involved here somebody might throw out a first and then I think that'll wreck Washington. I'm don't I really don't think Washington wants to give up any first round picks right now. This is a team that is also building for the future in a way so that when these guys get older, 
they got they have some draft picks to be able to some prospects to be able to take over right now um now as far as being able to retain him after this year he's probably going to be demanding somewhere in the seven to eight million dollar range that's for me you know a seven million for a 50 point defenseman is somewhere around that you you have guys like nurse and stuff getting nine nine point five I don't think it's outlandish for him, for him to be asking for $7 million. And cap space is always going to be a problem with is always going to be a problem with the Washington Capitals. I'm not so sure that they are going to be able to retain him. It would be sort of a rental, which is why I don't think that a first is going to do it. But Justin Schultz in a second just might. It's definitely a big improvement over Justin Schultz. Uh, he, it would be great to have somebody to uh, play behind uh, Carlson to get a little more offense to, so he doesn't have to provide as much offense as he is. Dmitry Orlov isn't bad in that department, but they're not really a very good uh, team as far as offense from the D-line and just overall defensemen in general. Trevor Van Riemsdyk is pretty meh. Uh, Dennis Chalowski is pretty mad. It's not a stellar defense. And I think if they were really going to do something to improve their team this year to try to win a cup, which I do believe they will, defense is something that they would go for. So I could definitely see the Washington Capitals being in on a guy like John Klingberg. Tell me what you guys think, Washington fans. Would you give up that sort of thing for, uh, for Mr. Klingberg? Next, when you're talking about defense, you really got to talk about the Edmonton Oilers, don't you? Their, their defense is just absolutely tragic. They've made some very poor decisions as far as I'm concerned. I'm an Edmonton Oilers fan. Uh, the signing, I didn't understand the trade for Duncan Keith. He, he, did poorly in, uh, he did poorly in Chicago. He's put up some okay points, but most of them were second assists, and his defensive play has been brutal to tell you the truth here's the thing you got Tyson Berry Tyson Berry now I am doing this based on the fact that Dallas is kind of in a bind here they they will need a defenseman back if Klingberg is putting this kind of pressure on them to move now which means something has gone awry here something has gone awry because he just had to wait till the end of this year and he could be traded off, right? So, or sorry, traded off. He could just go wherever he wants to go. So this would be, this is basically Klingberg saying, or the team saying they don't want Klingberg, or Klingberg saying I want out even though I may not sign with that team. Because Klingberg himself doesn't even have an O-Tray clause in his contract. He can go anywhere. So, by the way, Hit the subscribe and the bell if you're enjoying this fine programming. Um, I don't like Tyson Berry. Maybe Dallas will. Uh, they're going to need a defenseman back in return. So let's look at Dallas on their defense here and see what would happen if you were to bring Barry, send Barry back there. I, I like Klingberg better than Barry defensively all day long. All day long. <laughs> For sure. And I even like him better offensively. Um, now, your people will say, well, Barry, he had almost a point a game or whatever the case may be. He had much better forwards to pass to. His first pass out of the zone is good. I have to give you that. But Klingberg's overall game would be much better. Now, Barry would be over here in Dallas, and he would have a defenseman like Essa Lindell to play with. I'll tell you what. He may actually improve quite a bit in that scenario. Essa Lindell is a fantastic defensive defenseman. He can definitely pull the weight of, uh, or pull the weight a lot more than anybody Edmonton has to improve or to work on Barry's defense or basically make it so it's less of an impact. But Barry's defense is terrible. I really am just hoping here that for some reason. Dallas doesn't know that or they cannot find too many teams that are willing to give a player back because they need a player back. And Klingberg is a big part of their power play. So Barry can work a power play. 
give Tyson Berry back and maybe a pick, a second round pick and Berry for Klingberg. Hopefully you can get away with that. Tell me, would you guys do that? I personally would be all over it. All over it. And then on all of these deals, there's going to be, if they resign, then you get an added pick or whatever the case may be. That's probably going to be the way the deal works. It's based on the fact that it's a rental, but if they resign, you add in somebody else. Would Edmonton be able to resign them? We know all about their cap issues. It might be uh, a little difficult, I would say, for them to be able to pull it off. Uh, what do they got? Colton Skibier don't have to sign him back. Like these, look at the restricted free agents they have next year. Uh, Jesse Pulley Harvey will get a, a a raise for sure. Yamamoto maybe not so much. Um, but Tyson Berry would be gone at four point five, so you'd only have to make room for three more million dollars. Two and a half, maybe if he if he's willing to stay for seven million. But right now, this team needs to turn things around, and I don't think Tyson Berry is helping out at all. I think might as well give Klingberg a try. If it doesn't work out, you got clean cap space for next year and do it all over again, hopefully without Hall and making the decisions, but that's probably not likely. Next, the Toronto Maple Leafs. When you talk about, I mean, they actually, their defense is a lot better than people give them credit for. It's not too bad. However, I still think that if they could add somebody like Klingberg, they would. Almost impossible for them to be able to. This is a pure rental decision if Toronto were to get. But when I did this, when I brought this up, everybody was all about Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. I heard a lot of people talking about Toronto. So I decided, like asking about Toronto. So I decided to look at it. Is it possible? It isn't a rental perspective they could probably do it um in the long term no way uh travis dermont or no hall i was thinking justin hall uh lila grin has been playing pretty good but he's only 22 years old this is a team that wants to win a cup like right away and a guy like klingberg playing with muzzin would be beautiful man beautiful for that defense it'd be absolutely fantastic um so they want a player back in return. Justin Hole's a big guy that can play okay. I, I don't think he should be in your 3-4 spot. But Dallas in this situation is either we're going to lose, get nothing for him or not. So it's possible you could do Justin Hole, and it's going to cost a second from somebody here, I'm sure. A second-round pick and a defenseman for sure. If somebody out of all these teams that I'm talking about right now ponies up a first, they're probably getting them. So if Toronto wants to pony up the first, uh, which I, you know, no team really likes to do, but if somebody goes over the top and ponies up the first, that'll probably do it. Now, you know, maybe you can look at some like Nicholas Robertson or some prospects or something like that to get it done. It would depend on how much, like, you got to be salivating a little bit to have an offensive guy like Klingberg playing alongside Muzzin. Really. Um, it would be a big upgrade to the defense. And when you're talking about going up against the Tampa Bays and Carolinas in the world, if there's one spot that I really think they need help with, well, so there's forward depth, big, strong, solid playoff guys that they might want to look at as well. But this would certainly help a huge going into the playoffs to have a veteran guy that has can be good on the power play plays a pretty good two-way game considering he's an offensive guy i like this for toronto tell me what you guys think it would be whole and maybe they can retain that's going to be the thing i i don't think any i don't think they're going to want to retain anything uh, the players the other teams we're talking about here probably wouldn't have to retain so hopefully they can get away with it. What's their, uh, let's look at their cap situation here. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, they don't have much cap space. Hall is probably he's got two, four million. You're gonna have to make up a million somewhere. Tell me how to tell me how you're gonna do it, Leafs fans. How how who else are you gonna add in there to make up that million? You're gonna have to add one more player. And uh, you know, maybe Kyle Clifford. Kyle Clifford's a player. I mean, they've it's depth. Add Kyle Clifford in there. Something like that. Tell me what you think, Toronto fans. I would, it would be absolutely amazing for Toronto if they were able to pull that off. Next, the Winnipeg Jets. A lot of Canadian teams in on here. Um, the Winnipeg Jets, Jets have experimented a lot with their defense. Lately, it has been turning out a lot better. They, it's got to the point where maybe they don't really have to make this deal. Um, Dylan was brought in on the offseason. But he's a left defenseman, and he takes Sandberg's spot here with Pionk and then Morrissey and DeMello. And I think DeMello is sort of the weak link here. He's not bad, but he's not really a top four, and they could really use another top four righty, I believe. Tell me if you would disagree with me out there. But I was thinking that he is strong enough that he can play in Dallas's bottom five, Five six five. He's making three million, so the money kind of works out a little bit. Dylan DeMello, and this is a team, the Winnipeg Jets. This is a team that really, for a guy like Klingberg, I think they might even pony up a DeMello in a first, but they may not have to. Whoops. I want They may not have to. And uh, what's their cap space again? They got $5 million in cap space as it is. So they, they wouldn't even have to give DeMello. Wow, if they could do that. No, they, they want to give up a player in return. DeMello in a second. Oh, they don't have a second. Wow. Do they want to give up their first in this deal? Man, getting... Getting Klingberg. Now, if you think you can resign him and he wants to stay in Winnipeg, it's possible they might even go as far as to pony up the first because Winnipeg has a difficult time getting people come there. It's a cold city. It's not the sexiest city in the world. If anybody who ever lives there, if you live there, you know there's a, a charm about Winnipeg. There's, you know... Uh, a small town mentality. It's a very safe place to live. There's a lot. It's a great place to raise a family and all of that sort of things like that. But sexy and cold doesn't not being sexy and cold doesn't usually lend well to multimillionaires. So I'm not sure if Klingberg would be interested in, in, in signing long term here. I think if it were to happen, that would be what would have to happen. So you could have a, a DeMello in a third, and if they re-sign, it becomes a first. That's basically what I think would happen here. Dallas gets a player, they get a third-round pick, and the possibility that he re-signs and get a first, I bet you they would be all over that. It would be hard It'd be hard to swallow, but he would add a lot to this defense. Um, it, it's a guy that a, guy, a, team, a, a city like Winnipeg has a hard time bringing in the town. Him and, him and uh, Morrissey would be a pretty solid combination, or him and Dylan would be a solid combination. Huge upgrade. They'd have a strong puck moving defense, puck mover on every line of their defense if they did it this way. I think it would be one of the strongest defenses Winnipeg's had in a very long time. Tell me what you think, Winnipeg fans. Do you agree with that? Tampa Bay. I know you're going, what? Tampa Bay. Uh, I'm going to go over this quick. It could happen. It would be absolutely insane if it did. Um, they don't really have the cap room, but I think they would give up some space if they had to. To uh, like, If they gave up a guy like Cal Foote, if they decided, you know what, we're going for our third, third cup. We're not going to worry about the future. We're going to uh, give back Cal Foote. And... Um,
they'd have to give up another body. Matthew Joseph, something like that. If they were to go right out and go, Matthew Joseph, Calfoot, you retain the money, that's, that could happen. Dallas will retain for a package like that. If you gave them like a solid package of young players, I'm sure Dallas would retain to be able to get that in return. And I could just see Tampa Bay doing something like this to go for it again this year. I wanted to look at it really quick. Um, it's possible that Tampa wouldn't do it because they want to take care of their future as well as they're now. But if they decided to go way over the top again, bring in a guy that could just make them have the best defense in the league, pretty much for sure, certainly in the East, I could see them doing something like that. And finally, what was mentioned in the article was the Carolina Hurricanes. And uh, this would be a deal. I found this funny. It, it, they called about his availability because uh, so, well, Slavin was injured and, uh, you know, Gardner's been out for a long time. But I think it would be more than that, to tell you the honest truth. This is a team that loves to have top, top, top. And I don't think they're too happy with the, the Ian Cole and Brendan Smith combination. They would rather have D'Angelo playing down here and maybe with Cole. Um, I know people that follow Carolina, they haven't been happy with Brendan Smith at all. And they might even consider a long-term deal for him if he loves Carolina because that's the way they are. If you love it there, they have a tendency to take care of you. It would take a lot of, uh, like, if they were to do that, maybe they let Kasperi Kokaniemi go and that $6 million comes off the books, and they just bulk up their defense all the crap. With Carolina, you never know what they're going to do. Now, what would they give up in a package like that? I think Ian Cole would be one of them. Something like that. It would give them a veteran defenseman to play in Dallas uh, to be able to you know, keep on going for their playoff aspirations. Um, and then a pick, second-round pick. And then actually probably an additional second or another pick if he resigns with the team. I, I wouldn't put them as a strong possibility of actually accomplishing getting them, getting him, Klingberg, but nothing would surprise me with Carolina. And since their name is out there, there's probably a way they, they would do it. You'd be go, wow, how about Nino, Nino Niederreiter? They're not going to be signing him. Uh, when Nietzsche is in the lineup, he doesn't really have that much of a, maybe they're offering up Nino Niederreiter. And Dallas needs offense. He's a relatively young guy. He's about, they're about the same age. Dallas can give him a shot. And now they're not getting their defense back. Maybe they pick, they pick up their own defenseman at the deadline to be able to move forward. But they could really use some depth in their offense too. So that's a possibility. Tell me, Carolina fans. What do you think of that? That's my full 42. That's all I got to give to you today. Um, tell me what I subscribe, hit the bell, all of those sort of things like that. I'm going to be giving you this fine content as often as I possibly can. Come see me on my show. Love to have you. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.